victory! In times like this, you need cards for more than a conqueror. Get your copies of Pastor W.F. Kumui's messages on the Victory Series and understand success and victory. Messages include 365 Days of Victory, Keeping Your Victory, The Feet After Victory, Hindrances to Victory, The Beginning of Great Victory of Fall. All these and many more messages on Victory are available on micro SD cards and MP3 formats. For inquiries and bookings, visit Life Church Limited, 3 Ayo Daily or Kelwood Street, Pagada, Lagos. Or call 81 081-913-544-81-913-544-74-01-876-9038. Remember, a message a day keeps the devil away. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Will you rise up, please? I want to show you something before we get to this session now. This is a special session. And it's special because of a particular reason I'm going to show you. Many people don't understand anything about the spiritual significance of midnight. And if you look at your program, you'll see that deliberately, we have extended everything till midnight to stop exactly at midnight because there's some special things that actually take place i'm showing you now from exodus chapter 12. in exodus chapter 12 before we actually start before we pray look at your bible exodus chapter 12 reading from verse 29 it says in verse 29 and it came to pass that, what? At midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. Look at verse 42. In verse 42, it's a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. Midnight, night. It was a night to be much remembered. The Lord had given the promise to Abraham many years before that the Lord was going to take these children of Israel out of captivity and bring them unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And then many years passed, they had not experienced that. Eventually, God called Moses, said, Get up and go to my people, get them out of that land of bondage. And then uh, Moses went to Pharaoh, Let my people go, let my people go. And he said, Who is that? I don't know the God. I'm not allowing you to go. And then it went on and on. And then at midnight, that was the D day. That was the real time. Your time has now come. I'm saying that this midnight, God is going to do something you've been expecting for a long time. The yoke that should have been broken many years ago is this midnight. The Lord is going to break it in Jesus' name. And, and this is going to be a night you'll never forget in your life. You know, all the prayers you have prayed, all the tears you have shed, all the, all the kind of uh, promises you have claimed, all the fasting you have done. It is this midnight that God is going to bring everything together, sum everything together. And you say, because you waited until that midnight, it's going to be a night you are going to remember for the rest of your life. Um, I, I'm looking at Luke. And Luke, I'm not preaching yet. You're just preparing yourself for the midnight because this is that midnight. Uh, I'm looking at. I'm looking at Luke chapter 11. It, it, it shows you now. Sometimes you know when we write a program, so look at the program. And many of those things that you see there, you may not understand. Some of them are prophetic. I said they are prophetic. And you say, well, when are we going to sleep? Why did they say we have never been doing something like this before? Why did they stop at 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock is not midnight. Look at this. In Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 5 right there. Luke chapter 11, I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 5. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend? And then he goes on to say, and shall go unto him... When? 
at midnight and say unto him, French, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut. This is not the best time to come for something like this. And my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity at midnight, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask, and shall be given unto you this midnight. Seek, and you shall find this midnight. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you this midnight. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened for you. If his son shall ask bread of any of you that say, Father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give me my will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he ask for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then been evil not to give good things, good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him this midnight? Amen. Give me a good amen there. Yeah. Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, Acts chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 25, Acts chapter 16, verse 25, I'm telling you a special miracle at midnight. We're looking at Acts chapter 16, verse 25, it says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. You know, there are some people, they try to pray the prayer of Paul and Silas at 4 o'clock, and the thing doesn't come. And he prayed the prayer at 8 o'clock and the thing doesn't come. And then by 10 o'clock, they, they have slept already. They cannot deny themselves and wait. And then at midnight, when everything is dead, sleep, and they are sleeping, and then you stand and say, Lord, the Lord says, you're still awake at midnight. You must be deadly serious for something. You're looking for something. All of us who are here tonight, we're looking for something. Yeah. Why would I be here at midnight preaching and praying if I wasn't looking for something? Why would you be here, you know, telling the Lord I'm bad in heaven, saying, oh Lord, this must be done. If you're not very serious about something, a midnight cry is the loudest cry you can make and the, and the piercest cry you can make. Something is going to happen this midnight. It says in verse 26, it says, And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaking, and immediately all the doors were open. I told you, your doors are open already. The gates are open already. Stay awake, stay awake, stay awake. This midnight, something is coming your way in Jesus' name. And everyone's bands were loose. Acts chapter 20, verse 7. Acts chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 7 here. In Acts chapter 20, verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow. And he continued, you now read the rest yourself. Did I hear you? He continued his speech until made up. This is at the time when Eutychus, you know, fell down. You know, the, the young man was asleep, but there was power, extraordinary power at midnight, and Paul the Apostle went there and then took up the boy and he said, it's life, it's him. There is life for the dead at midnight. There is healing for the sick at midnight. There's deliverance for the oppressed at midnight. There's dominion for the, those who are delivered at midnight. There's supply, supernatural supply for those who are poor at midnight. There is wife for those who are not married yet at midnight. There's husband for those who are not married at midnight. There's children for the barren at midnight. The gates are open, the windows are open, the supernatural is taking place at midnight. Close that Bible, put it on your bench and then cry to the Lord. At midnight your miracle is coming. Days, night, this night, a night you will never forget. A night you will never forget. A night you will never forget. At midnight there's something happening. At midnight there's something happening. The power of God unleashed over you and the power of God flowing through to you. Whatever it is you have asked during the day that was not done. At 4 o'clock it was not done. At 6 it was not done. At 8 it was not done. This midnight, a night to be remembered. That's when you are calling upon the Lord. You are saying, oh Lord, oh Lord, I'm here. Oh Lord, 
I'm here. Open my door. Open the gate. Open the gate. Oh Lord, let me move in. Let the gates open and let the righteous people of God enter. Something is happening this night. Something is happening this night. It's a night you will never forget. It's a night you will never forget. It's a night you will never forget. Power at midnight. Authority at midnight. Anointing at midnight. And extraordinary miracles, exploits at midnight. Supernatural experiences at midnight. Healing at midnight. And dominion at midnight. It's coming, it's coming. Catch your miracle before you go. At midnight, at midnight, it is happening. At midnight, it is happening. At midnight, it is happening. The program is prophetic. We, we brought you in here this night for something supernatural, for something glorious and, and, and weighty. That's why you are here. That's why you are here. That's why you are here. Call upon the Lord. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let the anointing flow. Let the power come. Let the mountains move. Let the sicknesses vanish. Let the oppression clear. Let the poverty leave. Let barrenness live your life. At this minute, let all your sorrows be wiped away. This night, this night, this night, this midnight. This is the hour. This is the time. Revival at midnight. Power at midnight. Authority at midnight. The anointing that breaks the yoke at midnight. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I present every brother, every sister before you. I pray, Lord, long-standing problems will move tonight in Jesus' name. Long-standing mountains, I say unto you, mountain, get out of their lives in Jesus' name. Long-standing long yoke, long-standing curse, Lord, stand in bondage. I release your people, Lord. I release your people, Lord. Set them free in Jesus' name. I pray that this will be a great night. A supernatural night. A night of miracle. A night of power. A night of authority. A night where we'll never forget in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I thought you'd give him a midnight clapping. A midnight clapping. A midnight clapping. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Look at Josh, uh, Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 13. Judges chapter 6, verse 13. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of? Where be all the miracles which our fathers told us of? We heard how you saved notorious sinners. What be all the miracles? We heard how you opened the eyes of the blind. What be all the miracles? We heard how the lame rose up and walked and leaped and jumped and ran. What be all the miracles? We heard how HIV was taken away in a moment of time. What be all the miracles? We heard of the plastic eye that then began to see. What be all the miracles? We heard, we heard of short legs growing out. What be all the miracles? We hear of the dead being raised. Raised, where be all the miracles? We hear of supernatural supply. Where be all the miracles? Or be where be all those miracles? We hear of those who have been buying for 21 years, and after just a short prayer, then God gave the miracle children. Where be all the miracles? We hear of the one that has said uh, the womb had been totally removed, and yet after prayer, the Lord created a new womb there, and then children, miracle children came. 
where be all the miracles we hear of the people of the dark powers bowing and surrendering before the people of God where be all the miracles God called Gideon and said Gideon I'm searching something with you it's going to be a new day it's going to be a new move something new is happening and then Gideon said I heard what you did with Moses I heard what you did with Joshua the sun stood still and the moon stood still and I'm not seeing that in my generation and the angel said you valiant man of God their day is gone this is your own day and I come to tell you this uh, this wonderful night and this special night that something is going to happen yeah. there's a key that is going to open the windows of heaven yeah. and it is this night something is going to take place there's an opening in your heart right now there's revelation in your mind right now there is a new horizon coming upon you even right now this is a kind of meeting you have never attended before. Tonight's meeting is special. And tonight's meeting is unique. And it's going to do something unique and special in your life in Jesus' name. I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 6. Acts of the Apostles chapter 6. And we're looking at verse 8. Acts chapter 6. And we're looking at verse 8. We're part of the miracles from Moses. We're part of miracles through Joshua. We're part of miracles through Elijah and Elisha. We're part of miracles through David and of Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. We're part of miracles through the Lord Jesus Christ. We're part of miracles through the apostles. Now we want to hear of miracles through the deacons, through the workers through the people that were just chosen to dispute food in the household of faith in acts of the apostle chapter 6 i'm looking at verse 8 and Stephen, full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people he wasn't an apostle great miracles came maybe you are not an apostle miracles are going to come to you you are not a pastor miracles are going to come to you and if it's coming through Stephen, it will come through peter if it's coming through the workers it's going to come through our pastors it miracles in every church miracles in every satellite church miracles in every district church and miracles when we come here together it doesn't matter saturday or sunday and monday or thursday wednesday or tuesday miracles every day from now on in jesus name among in our children church miracles in our youth a section miracle among our women in their fellowship miracles among our men miracles when we come to celebrate together at the service on sunday miracles 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 in jesus name we're told and Stephen, full of faith and power the great wonders and miracles among the people i'm looking at chapter 8 of acts acts chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 6 acts chapter 8 we're reading from verse Six. Here we're told again of another person, not an apostle, in verse 6 it says, And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Philip, Philip is hearing of the miracles which he did. The time has now come. I said, The time has now come. And while we're preaching like this, miracles taking place in your life. And then when you come to church like this, somebody in the hospital is ripping micro already. And all the heartaches and all the problems we brought before, we have been praying about this, about this. Now, before we even finish the prayer, now miracle everywhere. And there will be the shouts of joy of miracles in Jesus' name. Thank God for you who are here to open the gate. The gate into the miracle. The gate into the supernatural. The gate into the exploits in Jesus' name. I want to speak to you tonight on the message, the miracle in your mouth. The miracle in your mouth. What is the miracle? I said, what is the miracle? It's in your mouth. The miracle in your mouth. Three things we're going to come on. Number one, extraordinary miracles through a warrior's mouth. Extraordinary miracles through a warrior's mouth. A warrior's mouth. Those who are fighting the battle of the Lord, fighting the good fight of faith. They are warriors. And through their mouth, you have the miracle. Point number two, it's exceptional miracles in the woman's mouth. Exceptional miracles in the woman's mouth. Every one of our sisters should carry miracle in your mouth. Can I hear amen from the sisters? With your husband, miracle. With your children, miracle. Your kitchen while cooking, miracle. While you're doing the laundry washing, miracle. Something is missing and all of a sudden, 
miracle power of God will find it out in Jesus name in your stomach in your womb there'll be miracle any part of your body that is dead there'll be miracle there is there's a miracle in the in the in the mouth of the woman and then point number three explosive miracles through your wonder walking mouth your wonder walking mouth your mouth will work wonders I thought you'll say it with me my mouth will work wonders I will say that again Explosive miracles through your wonder walking mouth. I come to number what's number one again? Extraordinary miracles through a warrior's mouth. You see, the miracle is in your mouth. Look at Moses. Look at Moses. People thought the miracle was in the road. Uh 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 uh. The road only came after the miracle was in his mouth. And it doesn't matter whether you can speak eloquently or not, like Aaron, or whether you stammer like Moses. If you are a believer, that miracle is right there in your mouth. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. I'm reading there from verse 13. Exodus chapter 14. I'm, I'm reading from verse 13. The miracle is in your mouth. In verse 13, it says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Lord, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. He had not struck the rod yet, but he prophesied. The miracle was in his mouth. See those Egyptians. The Red Sea was not even open yet, but he said you'll not see them. In, they're going to be drowned in the sea. These Egyptians are to see today. These infirmities to see today. And these problems to see today, you will see them no more forever in Jesus' name. Can I, can I, advise, can I counsel you? Preserve your mouth for speaking only the words of miracles. Only words of power, words of authority. When there's nothing to say, keep quiet. And then when the Egyptians are coming near, say keep quiet. When while the Israelites are shouting and crying, keep quiet. And then when the Lord drops that inspiration in your heart, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. When your heart is full of faith, that's when to talk. When you're full of unbelief, don't talk. When you're full of doubt, don't talk. When you're full of fear, don't talk. When you're full of uh, I'm concerned, don't talk. When you are wondering, don't talk. But when faith has come when there is inspiration when there is power when you remember that the god of yesterday is the god of today the god of ages past is the god of present time and when you remember that god had given his promise that no man shall be able to stand before you and then the children of israel they are afraid that's the time to open your mouth and say stand still and see the salvation of the lord for these egyptians that you see today you will see them no more forever and then you say and the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Did it happen? It happened exactly like that. The miracle was in his mouth. Joshua, Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 12. Joshua chapter 10 in verse 12. These were warriors for the Lord. These were great, great warriors on the battlefield for the Lord. And the miracle was in their mouth. Don't talk when you are discouraged. Don't talk when you are depressed. Don't talk when you are unbelieving. Don't talk when there is confusion. But when that inspiration comes, when that part, the faith, the authority comes, the anointing comes upon you, that's when to open your mouth, a miracle will come out. In Joshua, Joshua chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 12. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12. And then speak, Joshua, this Joshua speaking to the Lord. In the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said, in the sight of Israel, son, he said, he said, he said, in the sight of Israel, son, stand there still, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people have avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is, is not this written in the book of Jesha? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like 
that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. You see Joshua the milk was in his mouth. What if he kept quiet? Some people they talk when they should be quiet and then they are quiet when they should talk. When the when their enemy is uh, not near, when there's no problem, they chat and talk and you know, uh, just talk talk, talk, talk. But then when the enemy comes, that time they cannot talk anymore. But look at Joshua. You'll never find Joshua talking something irrelevant, something unimportant, a non-essential. That man was a quiet man. But when the battle reached, and when it appears that the sun was to go down, and they will not be able to finish the enemy, you will finish the enemy. All that assignment on the battlefield as we're going like this while the enemy, and then the sun is going to set, and then it's going to be dark so that the enemies will hide them. He said, Son, stand right there, stay right there. Let me finish all these Canaanites and all these enemies because the people of God they are going to inherit the land. I see you are going to inherit the land. I said you are going to inherit the land. Any son that will set anything that will happen that will not allow you to finish that a battle, that thing will stand right there. But Joshua opened his mouth to talk to the sun and to the moon only at the right time. Say the right thing at the right time. Against that mountain, against that problem and that challenge, you are going to have a miracle in Jesus' name. There is a miracle in your mouth. I'm looking at 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17. The miracle is there in your mouth. It's not the stone, it's what you said with your mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 45. It says, and Then said David, then said David to the Philistines, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, wonderful. I said, wonderful. This day will I, will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee. He didn't have any sword in his hand, but he said, I will smite thee, and he did. And that take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the, and to the, and to the wild bees of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Everybody will know there's a God in your family. There's a God in your church. There's a God who delivers, a God who saves, a God who protects his soul, a God who defeats the champion of the enemy camp. And that God will walk in your life in Jesus' name. You see, he overcame the uh, Goliath with his mouth false before he ever uh, uh, applied the, 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 the sling and before he threw the stone. Some people think it's a stone. No, it begins from the heart. And then when your heart is inspired, when your heart is full of faith, when your heart knows the word that the Lord will deliver you from the lion, he'll deliver you from this Philistine. He delivered you from the bear. He'll deliver you from this Philistine. And that's what you are thinking about. That's what you are meditating. That's what you are running over in your mind. And the promise of God fills your heart that till the end of your life, no man shall be able to stand before you as your days are so shall your strength be. And then you speak out. You speak out. You speak the words of miracle. Speak over your children. Words of miracle. Over your wife, what's of miracle? Over your husband, what's of miracle? Over your family, what's of miracle? Over your whole local church, what's of miracle? Miracles will happen in Jesus' name. And during the announcement, let it be what's of miracle. And during the prayer, what's of miracle? During the encouragement, no words of anger anymore, and no words of depression anymore, discouragement anymore, and rebuke. And why this? Why this? remove all that now? Because a new day has now begun. And we're going to speak words of miracle over the congregation in Jesus' name. Before we ever throw any stone, before we ever stretch any rod, before we ever do anything, when the words of miracle come out, the rest will follow, a miracle explosion will happen. I'm looking at 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. We're looking at it now from verse 12. Miracles today. Miracles tomorrow. Miracles this week. Miracles next week, miracles in your family, miracles all around. 
and when we come together interact together miracle explosion in jesus name first kings chapter 17 but i'm looking at verse 12 first kings chapter 17 verse 12 and she said as the lord thy god liveth I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cross, in a cross, uh, in a cross. And uh, behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and for my son, that we may eat it, that we may eat it and die. When the prophet is near. Death of a far away. Yeah. When somebody was come, he came, he came to that woman's life, to that woman's family, because God said, I'm sending you anywhere God sends you. Death will run away. Yeah. When light comes in, darkness will leave. Yeah. When the prophet comes in, death will depart. Yeah. And when I come in anywhere, Death will run away. Life will come in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes, sometimes, uh, your, your local pastor says, I'm going to take you to see the pastor. Ah, I don't want to see the pastor. Why don't you want to see the pastor? Because, uh, you know, the local pastor is going to say this and that. Don't worry, come. When you come, all that death will vanish away. All the dead will vanish away. It is not what you are coming to say that matters. It is what is going to happen to you that matters. I said it's what is going to happen to you that matters. Life will come into you. Power will come into you. Authority will come into you. Something you have been praying for for a long time. When we see together, and when we see together, and then I look at you, look at me, there will be an explosion of miracles. He said, I'm preparing this so that I'll go in and die. Listen to this, and Elijah said unto her, fear not. I come to tell you tonight, fear not. You know, the oil had not, was not increased yet. It is the word, the word of miracle. The miracle is in your mouth. It's not in the pot. It's in your mouth. The miracle is not even in the pouring. It is. We say it out. When I say that word out, maybe you don't feel different yet. But the moment I release that upon your life, the miracle is there already. That's why it says over here. It says, Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. I thought you'd say amen. Yeah. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. Did she die? Uh -uh. You will not die. Yeah. I said you will not die. It is not what she said that mattered. It is what the prophet said that took hold. She said, I'm going to prepare this meal so that I prepare it and then we eat and we die. Even though she mentioned death, but because the word of the prophet superseded the word of the woman. That power that is greater than power is like what she said is only 1%. And what the prophet said is 100%. And 100% will swallow up that 1% in Jesus' name. Whatever you have said about yourself before you came here on this memorable night, I cancel that negative thing in Jesus' name. I am tired. You know you are not tired. I can't go on again. No, you will go on. I'm quitting. No, you will not quit. I can't move on again. You will move on. There's no job. There is job. I am poor. You know you are not poor. I am miserable. No, you are not miserable. I pray in your life right now there will be a turning around. There will be a change, a mighty change in Jesus' name. It is not what you have said about yourself. It is what the prophet says about you that will supersede everything in Jesus' name. The miracle is now our mouth. I said the miracle is in our mouth. 
I'm looking at Second Kings chapter seven. Second Kings chapter seven. They had been farming for many years now, and then the king came unto the prophet, and he even wanted to make trouble, wanted to fight, and then in Second Kings chapter seven verse one, then Elisha said, "Hear ye the word of the Lord." The door says the Lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fl fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. That was it. That was it. The miracle was in Elisha's mouth. The, the miracle that will turn the famine of the whole nation around, it was in his mouth. That's what I'm telling you. The miracle is in our mouth. And if we just say that word, that word will produce a miracle in Jesus' name. Can I tell you the other side of it? I'm sorry about this. The misery is in our mouth as well. Life is in our mouth. Death is in our mouth. Healing is in our mouth. Disease is also in our mouth. Dominion is our mouth. Defeat is also in our mouth. Life is there if you speak of the words of life. Death is there if you speak of the words of death. Look at verse 2. Then a lord and officer on, on whose hand the king lead answered the man of God and said, His problem was in his mouth. Death was in his mouth. Misery was in his mouth. Why we carry miracles in our mouth? Other people, what will kill them? They carry in their mouth. Said, Behold, if the Lord will, will make windows in heaven, might they sin be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. I will eat thereof. I said, I will eat thereof. That's why you are telling the Lord, purge my mouth, purge my mouth. Can I tell you something? Number one, the convicted mouth. When Moses came to the Lord, Moses said, oh Lord, I cannot speak. You know, the kind of tongue I have, uncircumcised tongue, he had a convicted mouth. But then, you remember Isaiah? Isaiah said, I do in the midst of unclean people. And then the Lord sent the angel and took that coal of fire and touched his lips. I said, this has touched thy lips, thy mouth. And then you are cleansed. Number two, a cleansed mouth. A cleansed mouth. As you come before the Lord, because now this is December, we're going into a new year. And this new year is going to be like a year you have never lived in your life. This prosperity of this new year will be something you have never seen in your life. The victory, the healing, the health, the power, the wisdom, and the breakthrough you are going to have in this new year. You have never seen. This is going to be a very new year in your life in Jesus' name. And before you get into this new year tonight, today, a cleansed, a cleansed mouth. Number three, a controlled mouth. A controlled mouth. Control your tongue. Control your mouth. All the things we used to say in days gone by years, we can't say those things anymore because now we carry something precious, something heavy, and something tangible, and something great, something heavenly. Now in our mouth, it's a controlled mouth, and then a consecrated mouth. You consecrate your mouth like that of Ezekiel. The Lord said, Ezekiel, I'll shut up your mouth when I don't have anything to say for you to tell the people. And then when I give you inspiration, I will open your mouth, and then you will talk to the people. It's a controlled mouth, a consecrated mouth. A circumcised mouth, circumcised mouth. This has touched you, and then your mouth is cleansed and circumcised. A commanding mouth, commanding the sun, commanding the moon, and commanding all those problems to move away. And then a confirmed mouth, confirmed mouth. That is everything you say with your mouth, the Lord will confirm. I said the Lord will confirm. In Mark chapter 16, verse 20, Mark chapter 16, I'm looking at verse 20, Mark chapter 16, we're looking at verse 20, you see the confirmation, the confirmation of those great words, prophetic words, and powerful, positive words that will speak, and they went forth and preached everywhere, you see their mouth, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the words, the words of their mouth, were signs following, confirming the words were signs following, number two, exceptional miracles in the woman's mouth exceptional miracles in the woman's mouth exceptional exceptional something we've never seen sisters where are you i said sisters where are you this new year is going to be different and the same thing is going to be different there first of all you realize that this new year now you carry miracle in your mouth say i carry miracles in my mouth Say that again, I carry miracles in my mouth. 
Uh, you, you know, there, there are people that, the, the way they talk, uh, they carry misery in their mouth, death in their mouth, sickness in their mouth, discouragement in their mouth, oppression in their mouth. They kill themselves with their tongues, but then you come alive. Miracle in your mouth, that anytime you open your mouth like this, miracle will happen. I thought the sisters would say amen. amen. Exceptional miracles in the woman's mouth. I'm looking at 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 17. 1 Samuel chapter 1. And I'm reading here from verse 17. In verse 17, it says, Then Eli answered and said, Go, go in peace. The Lord God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, This is the point of the miracle. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. She was crying, she was weeping, she was sorrowful before because she had no child. But then Eli said, ah, take your drunkenness away. She didn't disrespect um, Eli. She had a respectful mouth. I said, no, my Lord, I'm just a woman of a sorrowful heart. This is what is happening to me. And then Eli said, and he didn't say, you of all people praying for me. Take away your prayer. Oh, friend, I'm finished. I'm rebellious children. You cannot control your family. And then you are saying that God will give me a child. I don't want your prayer. Hold your prayer. Hold your prayer. She didn't say that. She had a respectful mouth because she carried miracle in her mouth. I'm praying that God will change your tongue. Change your lips. And you'll carry miracles in your mouth in Jesus' name. She said, let it be unto me as you have said. And it happened like that, and she gave back to a prophet. I'm looking at Second Second Kings chapter five. Second Kings chapter five. I'm reading there from verse one. Second Kings chapter five. Miracle in your mouth. I'm looking at verse one now. Naaman, the captain of the host of, of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honourable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor. But, but, but he was a leper, and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, that's a lady, that's a girl, and she walked or she, she waited on Naaman's word, and she said, she said, hey, before, the, before Naaman jumped into the water, she said, before Naaman ever packed his loads to go to the prophet of what she said, it was as a result of what she said. That's how the miracle came. Let your mouth produce miracle. Your mouth will produce miracle. And she said unto her, unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his, lepro of his leprosy. As she said, so it happened. I said, so it happened. I said, so it happened. She had a reassuring mouth. A reassuring mouth. I'm sure, I'm sure of this. That if, I, if my master will go to the prophet in that place in, in Samaria, she, he'll be cleansed of his leprosy for Anna, respectful mouth. And for this uh, young lady, reassuring mouth. I'm coming to Second Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4. I'm reading there from verse 18. Second Kings chapter 4. Uh, this is the story of uh, this uh, child that died and then the mother of that child the Shunammite woman uh, was going to Elisha and then look at this in verse 18 the husband and, and when she when, when the child was uh, was grown it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers and he said unto his father my head my head and he said to a lad carry him to his mother and when he had taken him and brought him to his mother he sat on her knees till noon and then and then and then died and Anna look at look at this and uh, so she wanted to go to the man of God and uh, verse 23 and he said wherefore Will thou go unto him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, and she said, that's, that's the miracle, that's the miracle, it shall be well. The child was dead already, but she didn't say, well, the unexpected has happened. My joy is gone. 
the very source of my life is gone. The thing that brought life and joy and happiness to me, I cannot see it anymore. And then wailing and weeping. But she said, it shall be well. That's a miracle. That's a miracle in your mouth. I said, there's a miracle in your mouth. Whatever is happening, the rain is pouring down. The sun is scorching and biting. And it appears the road is dusty. And it appears that everything is just in confusion. And I don't know what I'm going to do. But it shall be well. I said it shall be well. I said it shall be well. Everybody is downcast. But I say it shall be well. Everybody is crying. But I say it shall be well. Everybody is saying, Pastor, Pastor, where have you been? We have been going through this and this. And I said it shall be well. And this new baby were rejoicing over see what has happened. And I said it shall be well. You carry miracle in your mouth. You see this woman, there's a miracle in her mouth. And I'm telling you that as you live in this uh, coming weeks and months and years, let everything turn around. And let your tongue and your lips and your mouth bring miracle around you everywhere in Jesus' name. And then, look at verse 26, and now run. Run now, I pray thee to meet her and say unto her, is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, Where are you? And she answered, Sisters, where are you? And she answered, It is well. And that was a miracle. That was a miracle. She said it before it happened. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say unto this mountain, mountain of problem, mountain of death, mountain of sickness, mountain of poverty, mountain of barrenness, you will say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and it shall be so. And nothing shall be impossible unto you in Jesus' name. Did her child come alive? Of course, it came alive. She had a reckoning mouth. She reckoned it down. She reckoned it. the child was dead, but she said, It shall be well. My child will live. My child will get well. Everything will be all right. A reckoning mouth. She reckoned the things that be not as though they were. She reckoned death as if it was life. She reckoned impossibility as if it were possible. A reckoning mouth. I'm looking at Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Here is the angel talking to Mary. And Mary has said, how shall this be? Because I do not know any man. And the angel has said, the spirit of God will come upon you. Therefore the holy thing that shall be born of you shall be called the son of the highest. Because, look at verse 37. 7 Luke chapter 1 for with God nothing shall be impossible let's say that together for with God nothing shall be impossible don't sleep say it aloud now you're going to ask something for God nothing in my life shall be impossible won't you go now you're going to say nothing in our church for with God nothing in our church shall be impossible Ah, I see your family there, and your family is saying, look at this, and look at this, and look at this, and then you, we all know this year, from January to this December, the pastor said there'll be this rejoicing, there'll be celebration, there'll be this, and look at this. Hey, for with God, nothing in your family shall be impossible. Say it aloud. You know, my work, look at my work, and look at my business, and look at my boss, and look at this, and look at that. For with God, nothing in my place of work shall be impossible. You know, our school, our college is difficult. Those lecturers, those people, they, ah, are you a great, no, born again, born again people? Uh, and you, of all places, you are even deeper. Uh -huh. We will see whether you will take a, you know, certificate out of this place. And I come to tell you, to, this is midnight miracle. Yeah. I said, this is midnight miracle. For with God, nothing in my school or college shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Be it unto me according to thy word. The miracle was in her mouth. And that's what I'm telling you, that that was a receiving mouth. The angel said it, with her mouth she received it, a receiving 
mouth. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 15. Matthew, these are women, these are women, these are women. A woman like you receiving miracles through their mouth, and you too, you are receiving that same miracle in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 15, I'm looking at it from verse 21. Verse 21, and Jesus went advance, and they were told, and departed unto the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast, and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a, with a devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then came she, she will not give up, you will not give up. And worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, It is not right, it is not suitable, it is not fit, it is not meat to, to take the children's bread, to cast it to the dog. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dog seat of the crumbs would fall from the master's table. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, O woman, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. She carried miracle in her mouth. I said, She carried miracle in her mouth. It was a reformed mouth, a refined mouth. You see, when Jesus said, it's not try to give the children's bread to dogs, she could have said, ah, so you mean I'm a dog? Thank you very much. Hold your miracle. Hold your healing. Hold your deliverance. I saw that, you know, you'll be compassionate and merciful on a poor woman like myself. who said, I'm a dog. Okay, bye-bye. You don't see me again. But she didn't say that. She said, truth, Lord. Truth, Lord. She still called him Lord. That was a reformed mouth, a refined mouth. And she said, even the dog seat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus said, great is your faith. And that is how she received the miracle. That's how you are going to receive your miracle. I remember that woman that had the shoe of blood. She said in her heart, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And she was made whole. You'll be made whole in Jesus' name. That's a reclaiming miracle. She reclaimed and recovered her miracle by her mouth. A, re a reclaiming. And then, Master, Lord, if you had me here, my brother Lazarus would not have died. But now I know. Now I know. Now I know that whatever you are asking the Lord, the Lord will do it. And Jesus said, take ye away that stone. And Martha said, Lord, I know that whatever you ask, God is going to do. But he's thinking by now. And Jesus said, as you are believe, just keep on believing. Keep on believing. And have a raining mouth. The mouth that reigns over death. The mouth that reigns over curses. The mouth that reigns and rules over impossible retain that mouth and then Jesus said Lazarus come forth and Lazarus kept your Lazarus will come forth I said your Lazarus will come forth those women that were read about having a respectful mouth a reassuring mouth a reckoning mouth a receiving mouth a reform refined mouth a reclaiming mouth a reigning mouth that's how they got their miracle you are getting your miracles in Jesus name I come to point number three now explosive miracle explosion is going to take place this midnight explosion I said explosion will take place in Jesus name explosive miracles through your wonder walking mouth it's not far away it's uh, here there we're in matthew chapter 17 verse 20. matthew chapter 17 we're looking at verse 20. matthew chapter 17 verse 20 and jesus said unto them because of your unbelief for verily i say unto you if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed ye shall say it's in your mouth he shall say the miracle is your mouth. He shall say the wonder, the signs is in your mouth. He shall say the explosion, the exploit is your mouth. He shall say unto this mountain, remove hands to yonder place and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Who is this you I'm looking at here? This you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Where is he? Where is she? You are there. Um, you mean this midnight, nothing shall be impossible unto you? Yes. And then you mean tomorrow, nothing shall be impossible unto you? Yes. 
you name it and you claim it and it's yours. You see it and you say it and it is yours. You hold on to it like this, so will not let go and it is yours. That that midnight miracle will be yours in Jesus' name. You see, it says nothing, nothing shall be impossible until I told you, I told you. There are people that carry misery in their mouth. Do you remember Rebecca? A worried mouth. Isaac, I don't, see what his soul has done. If Jacob will marry from all these other people here, what shall my life do unto me? That's why they sent Jacob away and this Rebecca died before Jacob came back. Because of him, a worried mouth. He's so smart. A weak mouth. A weak mouth. You know, I'm at the point of death. I'm so hungry. What will the birthright do unto me? And with that mouth, he sold his birthright. A weak mouth. His, uh, his stomach was tied to his mouth. His stomach was hungry, and therefore, his mouth was weak. Something, a waggy mouth. Talk, 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 talk. And Delilah said, you have not shown me the source of your power. How is it to say you love me? And you are not revealing your mind to me. And the wagging mouth, the wagging mouth, turning here and that, talking, 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 or kept talking until he sold himself into the hands of the Philistines. Look at Michael. A witch, witch, less mouth. Witch is understanding. W-I-T. His wisdom. But she didn't have the wisdom. And then uh, David was rejoicing ever more before the Lord. And then Michael said, How is it to behave like just a fool and all that before all these other people? And the Bible says she had no child because of that witless mouth until the day of her death. Nebuchadnezzar, the worldly mouth. Here is Babylon that I built by the strength of my might. And then we're told immediately a voice came from heaven. It was turned to an animal because of a, word, a worldly mouth. Look at that officer on whom the king was leaning. Even if the Lord will open the windows of heaven, might all this is be as a wild, a willful mouth. Willful mouth. He had seen the miracles done by Elisha. He had seen all those uh, miracles that the Syrians came against, uh, against Samaria. And then Elisha would say, they are there, they are there, they are there. Don't go there. Even after seeing all that, he still said, if the Lord will open the windows of heaven, that kind of willful mouth brought him into death. Look at Miriam. Miriam had a kind of whispering mouth. Did you see Aaron? What the kind of wife uh, Moses married? After all, he said the only one the Lord is talking to. And then the leprosy came upon her. You see, the misery was in their mouth. What if they had kept quiet? What if they didn't say what they said? All those things would not have come unto them. And Ananias and Sapphira, a wayward mouth that they carried. How is it to have lied unto, unto me? You have not lied unto man, you have lied unto God. And right there he died. And then Sapphira came about three hours later and said, Tell me, is this so much you sold the land? Oh, yes, for so much. Is it you have agreed together? That kind of wayward mouth brought them death. Do you remember Sinakir Barab Shaki? It says, You Israelites, come on now. I'm going to I'm going to give you your peas to drink, and you will eat your dung. That man he had a wicked mouth. And then we're told an angel came from heaven and smote 185,000. It was their mouth. They carried their misery in their mouth. But you today, this night, midnight hour, you are going to carry a miracle in your mouth in Jesus' name. Do you remember Belshazzar? That's a worthless mouth. Weighed and found wanting. His life was worthless. His mouth was worthless. His heart was worthless. Everything about Belshazzar was worthless. And because of that, that very night, that's how he was killed. Do you remember Job's friends? Job's friends. They had a wounding mouth. A kind of mouth that will wound another person. Look at what a job was going through. And then they say, you are a sinner. You are a backslider. Has this ever happened to a righteous man before? You are suffering because of your sin. And then we're told that God called them. In Job chapter 42, 42 verse 7, he said, You have not spoken the right thing about me like my servant Job. Now all, I'm angry with you. Go make sacrifice and Job will pray for you. Otherwise, I'm going to destroy you. You see, it was the amount that wounded their friend that wounded the Israelites they had a wilderness mouth, a barren mouth a mouth that they never believed anything God did, it was all those miracles there the manna they didn't believe there, the quest they didn't believe
him and they had the wilderness mouth and their mouth was dry dry of the promises of god they all died in the wilderness ahab a wavering mouth why don't you call a prophet that will tell us the truth jehoshaphat said and he have said well there's a man let him come and when he came i'm telling you don't tell me any other thing but the truth all i want is the truth and when this man of god then told him the truth he said jehoshaphat see him See, see what they're telling me? Did I tell you? He'll not tell me anything good. He had a wavering mouth. Herod had a wild mouth. A wild mouth. He came and then he gave an oration before the Lord. And he said, there's the voice of God, not the voice of a man. And then he took the glory. He died right there. But if you turn everything around and say, the mouth of the past is past. From this midnight, a new mouth. From this midnight, a righteous mouth. A wonder-walking mouth in Jesus' name. And that's why he tells us in Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 22. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. It says, and Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. The Lord is talking to you. I said, the Lord is talking to you. And he said, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. He shall have whatsoever he says. I will have whatsoever I say. This midnight, I will have whatsoever I say. This miracle night, I will have whatsoever I say. What am I saying? What am I saying? I'm, I'm saying it will be well with me. I'm saying I am well. I'm saying I am strong. I'm saying I am made whole. I'm saying I am not poor, I am rich. I'm saying I will not be jobless. I'm saying I'll not be miserable. I am saying mine is a miracle. I'm saying that good, the goodness of the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I am saying that the Lord will grant me long life. I am saying that as my days show, so shall my strength be. I am saying that the Lord will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I am saying I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because I will have whatsoever I say. I will have whatsoever I say. My brother, you'll have whatsoever you say. My sister, you'll have whatsoever you say. My child over there, you're going to have whatsoever you say. At this midnight hour, with the miracle, with the midnight miracle, what do you say? What do you say? Stand up and say it. Stand up and say it. And say, mine is a miracle. Mine is a power. Mine is the authority. I'm going to have whatsoever I say. I'm going to have whatsoever I say. A special night. A special night. Miracle, miracle, midnight, miracle, midnight, miracle, midnight, miracle is coming your way. It's coming your way. It's a unique night. It's never happened like this before. It's never happened like this before. Dig deep and, and, re, and, and get to the oil. Dig deep and get to the anointing. Dig deep and get to the, to the power. Dig deep and get to the authority. This miracle night, this miracle night, miracle for the mi midnight. Midnight miracle coming your way, coming your way, coming your way, coming your way. Don't sleep now, don't sleep now. This is the hour, your hour. This is the hour for your power. The hour for your power. The hour for your power. It has come, it has come. You tell the Lord, oh Lord, here am I. Oh Lord, here am I. I will have whatsoever I say. I will have whatsoever I say. You carry the miracle in your mouth. You carry the miracle in your mouth. You carry the power in your mouth. You carry the anointing in your mouth. You carry the authority in your mouth. You carry your healing in your mouth. You carry your deliverance in your mouth. You carry the dominion in your mouth. You carry your good, good luck in your mouth. And you carry the prosperity in your mouth. It's right there in your mouth. Your victory is there in your mouth. And your success is there in your mouth. Say it out. Say it out. Let the world hear. Let the world hear. Let your friends hear. Let your foes hear. And let yourself hear. Say it until you believe it. Say it until you believe it. Say it until you believe it. Because you will have whatsoever you say. You will have whatsoever you say. You will have whatsoever you say. At this midnight hour, if you say you are healed, you are healed. At this midnight hour, if you say you are prosperous, you are prosperous. At this midnight hour, if you say you are no more barren, you are no more barren. At this midnight hour, if you say that yours is the power, yours is the authority, as you say that you are strong, you are not weak anymore. In this midnight hour, you are going to have it. It's a midnight miracle. 
is a midnight miracle. It's a midnight miracle. It's a night to be remembered. A night to be remembered. A night to be remembered. You have it. You have it. You have it. You have whatsoever you say. You carry miracle in your mouth. You carry miracle in your mouth. You carry power in your mouth. You carry authority in your mouth. You carry joy in your mouth. You carry life in your mouth. Life for yourself. Life for members of your family. Life for your children. You carry success in your mouth. You carry dominion in your mouth. It's all there in your mouth. Say it out. Say it out. I believe it in my heart. And I say it with my mouth. I believe it in my heart. I say it with my mouth. I believe it in my heart. I say it with my mouth. Salvation, say it with your mouth as you believe in your heart. Sanctification, say it with your mouth as you believe it in your heart. Prosperity, say it with your mouth as you believe it in your heart. Healing, say it with your mouth as you believe it in your heart. Dominion, say it with your mouth as you believe it in your heart. Breakthrough, say it with your mouth. Believe it in your heart. It's there. You cannot fail. You cannot fail. You cannot fail. You will not fail. Failure is now of the past. Discouragement of the past. Sickness of the past. Weakness of the past. Destruction of the past. Loss of the past. It's a new day. It's a new day. Plunge into the ocean of the midnight miracle. Plunge into the ocean to the river of the midnight miracle. Let it happen. Don't delay with your mouth. Let it happen. Don't hold back with your mouth. Let it happen. Midnight miracle. Midnight miracle. Let the eyes of the blind open. Let the lame rise up and walk. Let the deaf and dumb hear and speak. Let the jobless receive their job. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the weak say, I am strong. Midnight miracle. Midnight miracle. Midnight miracle. Midnight miracle. It's there. It's yours. It's there. You have it. You have whatsoever you say. Say good. It's yours. Say well. Say right. It's there for you to claim. You will not lack anymore. Don't look at what you see around you. It's not what you see around you that matters. It's what you say with your mouth that matters. You carry your miracle in your mouth. It's there. It must come to pass. It must happen. It must happen. In Jesus' name we pray that Amen will bring it to your life. That Amen will give you a breakthrough. Midnight miracle, midnight miracle, midnight miracle. It's yours in Jesus' name. You will not be sad, you'll be happy. You'll be gloomy, you'll be glad. You'll not be poor, you are going to be rich. Everything you've lost, everything is brought back now. Windows of heaven are opened over your house, over your family. 
over your life and all the losses of the past will turn to gain every good thing you ever desired every wonderful thing you ever wished for every good thing you saw in the last of other you said lord if that could be me yes it is yours you are blessed in the day blessed in the night blessed on the street blessed in the house blessed in the church you are blessed at home everything your hand will touch will turn to blessing all the years of loss and the years of poverty and the years of crying and the years of weeping everything is taken away in jesus name there is a new day ahead of you there's a new thing you are going to do you'll get to places you have never gone you'll see things you have never seen you'll taste what you have never tasted the blessings you have never enjoyed you will enjoy them the new thing that starts tonight will never stop in your life every day a new miracle every week a new miracle every year a new breakthrough and the goodness of the lord will never stop in your life the word has come out of my mouth and and is putting miracle in your life in jesus name i say what the lord has said concerning you you say what the lord has said concerning you and as two of us agree together and say the same thing explosion of miracle will be taking place in your life Rest of those hands, mighty hands, powerful hands. Your hands are no more weak. Your hands are no more fruitless. You are no more unlucky. Breakthrough, good luck, prosperity, open door, opportunities, joy everlasting. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because you brought us to this very moment, this midnight. Oh Lord, I pray, shower your miracle of midnight over all your people tonight in Jesus' name. All the years of promise, oh Lord, I pray, this will be the night of fulfillment. I pray, Lord, that every negative thing, whether we know them, we don't know them, this night, they are passing away in Jesus' name. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon everyone. And this midnight, O oh Lord, when you see the blood, you'll pass over there. Evil will pass over there. Calamity will pass over there. Sickness will pass over there. Death, untimely death will pass over there. O oh Lord, I pray deformity will pass over there. Premature hazard uh, will pass over there. I pray, O oh Lord, from now on, they'll go from blessing to blessing from the goodness of the lord to another goodness of the lord i pray lord no sickness again no infirmity again no impossibility again no weakness again let your blessings come upon them in jesus name lord i pray this night will be their night of miracles at this midnight hour let all yokes be broken let all fetters be broken and let all their bonds be taken away in Jesus name loose them from captivity deliver them from all their sacks of the enemy and I pray Lord your blessings will multiply in every life in Jesus name every good promise they have claimed every good thing they have said fulfill for them in Jesus name make impossibilities possible in their lives fill their mouth with laughter give everyone a breakthrough and i pray lord nobody goes out of this place tonight without a blessing in jesus name confirm multiply blessings upon every life in jesus name from the top of their head to the tip of their toe let there be healing and health let there be power let there be authority destroy every work of the devil and lord as we get into tomorrow sunday it will be a sunny day it will be a day of joy and lord what you learned about last sunday to rejoice evermore now is the time for them to rejoice evermore no tears no weeping only joy and gladness confirm the miracle confirm the miracle confirm it O lord in jesus name we pray
And everybody say...